Hello everyone, this is your asynchronous lesson for today. It is January 6, 2021. We are going to be continuing studying for Hatchet today. And as I mentioned yesterday, one of the things that you are going to need to do on the test is um, complete a plot diagram. Um, it will be a matching or multiple choice situation, but what you guys told me was that you actually don't know what a plot diagram is. So that is what we are going to be talking about today. I'm gonna to hit present and see if it works. Oh, it does, beautiful. Okay, so this is your mini lesson on a plot diagram. In order to get credit for attendance today, you need to finish watching this video and complete the Google form that will be below. So our goals for today are to figure out what is a plot diagram and how does the plot diagram work for Hatchet. So what is a plot diagram? Let me make this smaller so you can see. I'm gonna bump me up here. There we go. Okay, what is a plot diagram? A plot diagram is a visual, visual representation of the plot or events of the story. And typically a plot diagram looks like this. Uh, other names for this would be like the plot mountain. Um, so we start off at the beginning with this kind of plateau where we're just getting some background information. That's the opening. Then there's a moment where the conflict begins. That's the inciting incident. And then we climb up the mountain, right? That's the difficulty and the challenge that the character in the story is going through. Much like climbing up a mountain is hard, they are trying to deal with the conflict. And so they are climbing up the plot mountain. That's most of the book. At the top of the mountain is the climax, which is the um, turning point of the story. It's the most emotionally intense story and the uh, main character typically solves the conflict one way or another. Um, and then we have falling action, which are the immediate consequences. And then our resolution are the long-term consequences. So the plot diagram has six parts, the exposition, inciting incident, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. So this next slide, just kind of illustrates this a little bit more. A plot diagram helps us understand the structure of a story. Um, and again, it's just a visual representation of the structure of the story. So we have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And then on this slide, I talk more about what the different parts mean. So again, the exposition is the beginning of the story and it exposes, you see that word exposes, exposition, the main character or characters, as well as the setting. The inciting incident, incident is another word for event and inciting means to like start something. So the inciting incident is the event that begins the conflict in the story. The rising action, is the many events where the main character is trying to deal with the conflict. Most of the time, this ends up being the vast majority of the story. Um, this applies to books, it applies to movies, it applies to TV episodes. This plot diagram, as a way to look at plot structure, applies to literally every kind of storytelling because it's how tension is developed in a story. So rising action is usually the majority, most of the story. Um, the rising action leads to the climax. The climax is the top of our mountain, as you can see right here. It is the high point of emotion. It is the turning point of the conflict where things like either go right or go wrong, but either way, the conflict is getting uh, solved in this moment. After the climax, we have the falling action. Um, you see it's like a pretty steep fall downwards, and that is meant to communicate the immediate results from the climax of the story. So what happens right away that lets us know, like, is this good or is this bad? And then we return to this flat part at the end, which is the resolution the conflict is fully resolved and the resolution tells us the long-term results for the main character. So uh, we're gonna go through an example together um, using the three little pigs. So that way you can uh, see how this works with another story and then we're gonna apply it to Hatchet. 
If you want to read the full text of Three Little Pigs, you can click on this link. Um, I'll post this uh, slideshow for you guys. Um, but I literally pasted the entire thing into this presentation. So um, we're going to go through step by step the different parts of the story. The beginning of the story is the exposition. The exposition should introduce us to the main characters and the setting. So when we look at the opening of Three Little Pigs, we meet the three little pigs, the first little pig with his house of straw, the second little pig with his house of sticks, and the third little pig with his house of bricks. So the pigs are our main characters and their houses are the setting or the place of the story. Next, we're going to the inciting incident. And you'll notice that I kept the plot diagram down here in this bottom corner for you to see how the plot progresses. So the inciting incident is the event that begins the conflict. For the three little pigs, it's when the wolf shows up. So the next day, a wolf happened to pass by. He smelled the pig inside the house, and he thought the pig would make a mighty fine meal. So now we have a conflict in, or a problem created between these two characters, the wolf wants to eat the pig. We met the pigs first, so they are our main character. Next is the rising action. The many events where the characters try to deal with the conflict, and it's usually most of the story. That is why there is so much writing here, because the majority of the story typically is the rising action. Um, for the three little pigs, the rising action is when the wolf blows down all of the houses. So at the first little pig's house, the little pig's house is made of straw and the wolf huffs and puffs and he blows the house down. And then little pig runs to his brother's house. The wolf continues on and then gets to the second house made of sticks. He huffs and puffs and blows the house down. And then the two little pigs run to their last sibling's house. The wolf chases them down the lane and almost catches them, but they get inside the brick house. And now, right, the tension has increased. We're more invested. We know the wolf is like hunting these siblings down. Um, and then we get to this moment leading to the climax where the wolf huffs and puffs at the brick house, but he can't blow it down and he's out of breath and can't puff anymore. So he stops to rest a bit and figure out what he's going to do. So all of this huffing and puffing is escalating or increasing the conflict and the tension in the story. And that is the rising action. Next, we get to the climax of the story. This is the high point of emotion and the turning point of the conflict. It's the top of our mountain. Um, the wolf is super angry. He danced about with rage. So we know it's this really high emotional point. Um, and he decides that he's going to climb down the chimney. Um, as the wolf is coming down the chimney, the pig pulls the lid off of a boiling pot of water and the wolf falls into the pot of water. So, right? The pigs and the wolf come to a point. They come to direct conflict where it's do or die. And in this case, quite literally. And how is it fixed? Well, the wolf falls into a boiling pot of water. So we think the pigs are going to win. That is the climax of the story. Next, we have the falling action. The falling action is the immediate results from the climax. Um, in this case, the little piggy put the cover on the boiling pot of water and they boiled the wolf. So the immediate consequence is the wolf dies. Ta-da! And this is very typical of most stories. Most stories have a very, very, very short falling action and a very, very short resolution. This is true in most movies. This is true um, for Hatchet. Finally, we have our resolution, the long-term results for the main characters. For the three little pigs, it's just they had a yummy supper. They ate the wolf. We don't find out anything else about them. And again, this is indicative or a clear example of how the resolution, again, tends to be very, very short. So that is the entirety of our plot. We meet the pigs. I forget if that's on the next slide. Yep. First, we meet the pigs and their three houses. Then the wolf shows up. That's the beginning of our conflict. Next, we have the rising action where the wolf huffs and puffs and destroys two of the houses. The climax is when the wolf jumps down the chimney and falls into the pot. The falling action is when the pig closes the lid and boils the wolf, defeating the wolf. And then the resolution is the pigs have a nice wolf dinner. You can literally do this plot diagram with an episode of SpongeBob. I've done that before with my eighth graders. So, um, 
you can use this to understand the structures of stories. And now we're going to do it for Hatchet. There's one difference, one big difference with Hatchet. Um, Hatchet has two climaxes in the story. So this basic plot diagram where it's just like a single mountain is now going to turn into this double peak mountain, as you can see in this image. So at the beginning, we have the exposition where we're going to meet the main character. We still have the inciting incident and rising action. There's going to be a first climax and a little bit of fallout right here. And then we're going to increase the tension again and then get to the main climax of the story, which is when everything is resolved and we'll get the final falling action and resolution. So we're going to take ourselves through that on the next slide. And this is the thing that you really want to pay attention to because uh, this is going to be what you're tested on. OK, so here is our hatchet plot diagram and we're going to step by step through it right now. Pay attention. This is what you need to study. OK, the exposition is chapter one. And if you go back and look at the study guide that you started working on yesterday and you should complete today in order to prepare for the test, you'll notice that I put the plot structure in the rightmost column of that document. So it tells you which chapters happen um, on the plot diagram. And that will be true on this slide as well. So chapter one is our exposition. Chapter one is when we meet Brian, the main character, we hear about the other characters, a lot of them are introduced in chapter one, and then we find out that our main setting is the Canadian wilderness. I hate that it does that. Next, when that goes away, we have our inciting incident. And our inciting incident really happens at the end of chapter one, um, but it also falls into chapter two. And the inciting incident is the moment where the conflict begins. So at the beginning of the story, Brian's just flying to visit his parents. The conflict of the story begins when the pilot dies. That is the inciting incident. When the pilot dies, Brian needs to fend for himself. That is the moment when he needs to start this survival journey and it only kind of gets worse from there and the tension increases from there so that is the beginning of the conflict and the inciting incident of the story so you'll see that our rising action is the many events that increase tension and the protagonist is going to work brian is going to work to resolve the conflict so in chapters 2 through 12 right that's a whole big chunk of chapters um that's all rising action. Brian's initial survival in the wilderness is just trying to survive until the searchers find him, right? So, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> um, in these chapters, this is where we see Brian creating shelter for himself, Brian finding the berries and finding other food sources like the turtle eggs um, and where Brian creates fire. So really developing these initial survival skills, waiting for the searchers to find him. He's surviving until that point. All of that is this initial rising action. Next, we have our first climax of the story. So our first climax is the first major event that would have solved the main conflict, which is when the searchers first show up. So you'll see my little note says the first part of the book is Brian trying to survive until the searchers find him. So the first climax happens when the search plane comes, but Brian doesn't or catch it. The plane doesn't see Brian and uh, he is not rescued. That is the first big climax or big emotional moment of the story that we were building to. And from this point on, things kind of change. He's not waiting for them anymore. Um, his kind of objective shifts a little bit. So the first main con uh, climax is when the plane comes, but Brian misses it. And that happens in chapter 12. After a climax, we're going to get a mini falling action, which is Brian's immediate reaction to the cl first climax. So you guys should remember um, the Brian, the Brian, in chapter 12, Brian immediately talks about how he loses all hope. And he thinks like all of this was for nothing. And he kind of gives up. And then in chapter 13, remember, there's that big time jump between chapter 12 and chapter 13. In chapter 13, we find out that his other immediate reaction to this first climax was that he tries to commit suicide. At that point, old Brian dies, new Brian comes alive. And that 
all is what composes your mini falling action here. From this moment on, we're back into this rising action where he's just trying to survive, but it's still building to a particular moment. So our next rising action is still going to increase the tension, and the protagonist is working to solve the conflict still. In this case, Brian is just trying to survive, but now he's trying to survive long term. So chapters 12 through 19 are the second rising action portion of the book. The second half of the book, Brian is just figuring out how to survive long term, and this includes things like the first feast, the skunk incident, the first meat incident, the moose, the tornado, and also diving down into the plane and getting the survival pack. All of that stuff is just Brian trying to figure out how to survive long term. And it's building to this final climax of the story, climax number two. Climax number two is the second big event that happens and actually does fix the conflict or solve the conflict that Brian is dealing with. In this case, the final climax of the book should lead to the resolution. So it happens when the second bush plane finds Brian um, through the emergency transmitter. And that happens in chapter 19. Next, we have a very short, as you'll see, a really short, fast falling action. Um, and it's his immediate reaction to this climax. So what is Brian's immediate reaction to uh, getting discovered by the bush plane? He literally just says, hey, do you want some food? And that's it. Um, so incredibly short falling action. And uh, if you just remember the second falling action is Brian asking if the guy needs food, you're going to get this question right. Um, and then our resolution is going to be the long term impact on Brian. So what is the long term results of Brian having gone through this conflict and climbed the mountain and come down on the other side? Um, and this is all going to be in the epilogue. The epilogue is going to reveal all of the resolution for Brian. It's these long-term impacts, such as his increased listening skills, um, his patience, his like amazement at grocery stores, the dreams that he has. All of these things are the long-term impact or the resolution. Okay, so this looks really crazy when you look at it like this, and that's why you need to go step by step right? Exposition, inciting incident, rising action, first climax, falling action, rising action number two, climax number two, falling action number two, and then your resolution, okay? So this screen is really important. Um, you will need to return to this screen uh, and or you can take a screenshot of it if you want to, but this is really what's going to help you study for the test. Um, what do you need to know for the test? you're gonna be shown this exact diagram right here. This is it. This is what's gonna be on the test. And you're going to be given nine events or quotes from the story. And you're going to need to put the events in the correct spot on the plot diagram. So if there's uh, a quote talking about just introducing Brian, you're gonna put it in the exposition. If there's a quote talking about him missing the plane the first time, it's going to be the first climax. If there's a quote talking about the positive dreams that he has, it'll be the resolution. So you can put your own notes on your study guide. Um, if you double click on the image of the plot diagram that is in the study guide you were given yesterday, you can add your own notes. Or like I said, you can screenshot this slide and use that to study for you guys. Um, but the point is that you need to know the events that happen in the story. I think the middle part is kind of the most challenging because again, that's most of the book. So um, if I have the skunk incident as one of my events that I want you to place on here, you need to know that that happens over here in the second rising action and not at the beginning of the book. Okay. So, and I'm not going to be mean. I'm not going to put like really random or really difficult things on there. They're going to be major events from the book that you should know and remember. Um, I have faith that you guys will do perfectly fine on this, but this is what you need to study. So this is the end of the video. I'm going to, like I said, this will be at the top of a Google form. Next, you need to uh, 
fill out the questions from the Google form below just to demonstrate that you watched the video. Um, the thing that the Google form is going to be on is the definitions of the different parts of the plot diagram. So I will scoot back to that slide for you guys. Do, 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 do. There, there are your definitions. Um, and that is what you'll need to answer questions on below to demonstrate that you watched this video. I will see you guys Friday. Uh, by Friday, you should have this part of the study guide completed so that we can do our preparation for our race questions. Uh, you'll notice on the stream in our Google Classroom, I have put the format of the test. It already has the three questions you're going to be asked listed there. So if you want to preview that, please go ahead and I will see you guys later. The end.